Welcome to worship here at Creator Lutheran Church. We give thanks to God that God keeps on finding ways to gather us as a body of Christ here in the sanctuary, but also on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube and all the different ways God gathers us. And today is a little bit of a different way of gathering too. As you saw, our prelude came from Arizona. And today the presiding bishop of the EOC is bringing the sermon. So that will be, and then we have a pastor from, I think, Illinois bringing the children's sermon. And then greetings from peace will be, the peace of the Lord will be from Costa Rica and even somewhere in the enchantments here in, in Washington. Because we are a body of Christ, not just here at Creator, but throughout the world. And so today, the, we're also on Earth Day, which means the Lutherans Restoring Creation put together the service, the liturgy. I decided to piecemeal it so you're not watching a video the entire time because I thought that would be a little boring to come and watch a video. But we will have pieces of those, like I mentioned, up on the screen. If we have a technology meltdown, those of you who are watching on at home, they will be posted later on YouTube so you can watch later. You have to have the contingency plans these days because of the reality of how we gather. So we um, will be honoring our creation and how God has gifted us with this planet, with our breath, with our life, and taking a day, a worship time to name that and name the, the stewardship that we have been called into as the body of Christ in creation. So let's enjoy that piece as well. Another update for next week is another kind of uh, a, a non a, I can't say that word, a not normal process. I can't say anomaly. How do you say it? Can you say it for me? You can't say it either. <laughs> um, it's our confirmation Sunday. And because of COVID, we are restricting that worship just to the families who are being conf of the confirmants. So if you're not part of a confirmand family right now, we ask you to watch worship from home. Um, sorry for that reality, but it's a reality of caring for our body of Christ and making sure those two youth and their families feel the fullness of support. And support right now means staying home unless you're one of those two families. And then we'll be back up and running um, as normal in this hybrid situation for Mother's Day in, on May 10th. Other announcements of our life the other. We also are... Um, you should have gotten an email if you're on our email list for our census that are going out. We're trying to update the da database. It's an ongoing thing that always has to be done. But right now, especially, we're trying to make sure we have the right information. Marion did some um, adjustments after our first rollout so we could get another email. Please fill that out. If you have questions about it, call the office. That's what we're here for to help make sure you understand. And if you are not on the email list and haven't gotten that or don't have email, we'll have a way to make sure you also are able to update your information on a piece of paper as well. 
Other fun signs of life in the spring are we have our corner back for young children who come into worship. It's a first come, first serve. So just one family so we can make sure that COVID needs are being met there. And our nursery is also open as well for two families to be able to come in so we can separate the families in the two rooms if needed. So if you are a family with young children and would like to have be in worship and have your children in the nursery, we have a way, we found a way to do that now in this time of COVID. So these are exciting signs of life for our parish here. Um, other COVID realities for those who haven't been in worship here in the sanctuary, we ask you to sing softly or hum rather than project your voice when we're singing. Keep saying your seats even for the passing of the peace. Share with the people close to you. Um, for communion, you should have picked up a, a little, one of those little disposable cups coming in. There are two seals on that. The first gets you to the, the bread and the second seal gets you to the, the um, grape juice. If you have trouble with that, with dexterity, raise your hand and we'll have an usher or somebody from the altar guild come and help you with that as well. I think those are our main announcements for the day. So let us continue with our call to worship. Please rise. We enter the song of creation. Cradles our ancestors birthing new life. We enter the prayer of creation. Sky brings darkness and light holds storms and the stars. We enter the praise of creation. Mountains peaked with snow, hills swaying with grasses. We enter the silence of creation, humanity between the ground and the heavens. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come here humbly as one earthly family to worship our creator, the giver of form, the maker of space. Amen. Our gathering song is All Creatures Worship God Most High.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who calls forth creation, invokes praise from creation, and stirs life in creation. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God, creation, and one another. God of righteousness and justice, you have made the earth and all that is in it, but we have failed to honor your good work. We do not recognize your presence among us, and our hardened hearts do not make creation's cry. You have made your land and a desolation, and we dishonor your image in our neighbors. Forgive us in your steadfast love. Of trampling your vineyards and polluting your sky. On your holy mountain, call us again to be stewards of your earth and to join all creation in songs of praise. Amen. Rejoice for the incarnate word has come to you. Laying aside all earthly glory, the servant of all, Jesus Christ, is obedient unto death to make of you and all of the earth a new creation. Rejoice from, for Christ, from whom nothing can separate you, forgives you all your sins. Rejoice for the one whose name is majestic in all the earth, rises up you up to newness of life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign of the universe, your first covenant of mercy was with every living creature. When your beloved son came among us, the waters of the river welcomed him. The heavens opened to greet his arrival. The animals of the wilderness drew near as his companions. With all the world's people, may we who are washed into new life through baptism, seek the way of your new creation, the way of justice and care, mercy and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. Our first reading is from Acts 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of God. Thanks Thank be, to, be God. to God. Our second reading is from 1 John 3, verses 16 to 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments 
and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please rise. The Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. My name is Harold Vanacek. I am the pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Marble Falls, Texas. And you know what? I love early mornings. And I especially love that transition time between night and day, the special and holy time between when the sounds of night, like the cricket and the owl, begin to fade, and the sounds of day, like the cardinal and the chickadee, begin to wake up. We are immersed in sound every day, like the sounds from nature, or the voices of family and friends, to our devices in our pockets, in our favorite music we love to listen to. What's amazing is that we learn to recognize certain sounds throughout our life, like the sound of a plane that's flying over, or the voice of a parent or teacher. Today, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he goes on to say that he knows his flock and his flock know him, that the flock following him will listen to his voice. Jesus is saying that we are able to recognize his voice. Yet, how do we recognize the voice of Jesus in our life and in our world? I have a small science demonstration that may help us wonder a little more about that. So come join me. Well, here I have my handy dandy resonance demonstrator. And it's really easy to make, and you can have an adult help you make this in an afternoon. All you need is a piece of wood, some wooden dowels, and some rubber balls. The instructions for how to make this resonance demonstrator are in our YouTube video notes. So something really neat happens when I move this block of wood back and forth at different speeds. Look at what happens when I move it at a slow speed. Now look at what happens when I move it at a medium speed. And look what happens when I move it at a fast speed. At different speeds, a different height ball moves back and forth more wildly. And when I move the block slowly, the ball on the longest now moves the most. But when I move the block fast, 
the ball with the shortest owl moves the most. So you may wonder what's going on. This is called resonance. Resonance happens when a bunch of small inputs, like moving a block of wood back and forth, happen at just the right time to add up to create a large movement. So what if recognizing the voice of God is about resonating with God, about being on the same frequency and the same movement with God in the world? And the word that we would use to describe God's movement and God's frequency in the world is love. Or maybe resonating with God happens when a bunch of God things happen around us at just the right time to add up to create a large movement within us, moving our hearts, giving us goosebumps, and filling us with just the right things to say or do in the moment to bring healing and life to others. So I want you to go and resonate with God's shepherding love for all, which resonates in you every moment of every day because of our good shepherd, Jesus. Amen. Grace to you and peace from Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Happy Good Shepherd Sunday and happy day before Earth Day. Thank you for this opportunity to, to read and think and pray about these very rich texts that all talk about and demonstrate the intimate care that God has for God's own creation. You know, at first I was a little skeptical about how I could work in a Good Shepherd Sunday and Earth Day all at once. Um, and I remember um, when I was in high school, I was part of the All Ohio Youth Orchestra. And I got to know sheep. You see, I'm a city girl, and I'd never really been close to sheep, other than those made with cotton balls and pipe cleaners. But our barracks were downwind of the sheep barn at the Ohio State Fair where we performed. And I had a very earthy experience with the sheep. Nevertheless, in all of the readings today, not just the Psalm, Psalm 23, so beloved, nor just the passage from John where Jesus declares that he is the good shepherd and that his own hear his voice. But in the other passages as well, we hear about God's tender care, particularly and intimately involved with the creation. Very often, it seems to me, in Western Christianity and also in Western philosophical thought, there is a sense that that is which of, that of which is of the earth, that is that which is material, is somehow inferior to that which is considered to be spiritual. And there is a great gulf between the material and the spiritual in a lot of Western thought and Western philosophy and I think it creeps into as well our own spirituality. And that's just not the case. We believe and celebrate that the beginning of Easter started in fact at Christmas with the incarnation, where God took on human form, where God took on the form of Jesus, was incarnate, took on human flesh, and became in his earthly life the earth creature, just as Adam and Eve and all of us were created from the dust of the earth, from dirt itself, from the soil, so Jesus has taken on this material nature. And we believe and confess that even in the resurrection, Jesus is fully human and fully divine. We make a mistake and we miss a lot, I think, when we try to walk away from our own creatureliness, when we try to somehow escape uh, this world that we're in and are not able to recognize that that God still cares about and is still creating this place, this earth, this cosmos, all of it. And that human creatures are just one part of the creation. 
and we have been called to tend this garden that God has given to us. And so when we disavow somehow our own creatureliness, I think we set ourselves off and apart from God. Luther, Luther put it this way, his understanding of God's presence in all of creation. Luther said that God's entire divine nature is holy and entirely in all creatures, more deeply, more inwardly, more present than the creature is to itself. Somehow seeing ourselves as separate also sets us up against God. And I would contend that our rebellion against or our pushback against our own createdness, the beauty of that creation, the limits of that creatureliness causes a lot of damage to the rest of creation and to ourselves. In the gospel stories, we have two accounts of women who anoint Jesus with pure nard. They came to tend to Jesus' earthly body just before his crucifixion. And Jesus praised these women for doing that. And nard, as it turns out, is an extremely rare and very pungent perfume, greatly prized in Jesus' day and still today. And the description of the aroma of nard is not one of flowers, um, but one of earthiness, of, of, of hummus almost, like, like soil of the earth. We hear in, in the story of Mary of Bethany anointing Jesus that the fragrance filled the whole room and was probably so powerful that even on the cross and in the tomb, the earthly body of Jesus still had the fragrance of the earth. It is to this good and beautiful creation that God has sent the good shepherd to tend the sheep, to take care of our creatureliness because that too is holy. And because of the incarnation of God with us in the flesh, all of our lives, that which is created, that which is temporal, is also holy. In the 23rd Psalm, which we probably all know by heart, we hear about the Lord as shepherd, tending this flock, bringing them to verdant pastures, taking care of these earthly needs for food, for water, for sustenance, for peace, for wholeness, that this is the promise of how God shows up for humankind and for all of creation of which we are a part. The good shepherd cares for our earthly lives. In the gospel according to John, which we just heard, we hear how Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Sometimes people think when uh, Christians talk about these things, particularly in the face of the climate crisis that, that we're in right now, about the danger and the harm that we have caused to, to the climate, that all of this imagery about Jesus being the good shepherd is somehow just pie in the sky, Pollyannish, wishful thinking that doesn't come to grips with the actual danger which we face, the harm we have caused, and the harm that's being caused to us. But if you think again about the story in John about Jesus saying he's the good shepherd, it doesn't shy away at all from the actual dangers and perils of this world. We hear about hirelings who are willing to flee rather than lay down their lives in order to protect the charge which they have been given, but the good shepherd doesn't do that. We hear about wolves who come to snatch and to scatter but that does not happen because the good shepherd protects the flock. We hear about other flocks and the good shepherd says those are not excluded because all will become part of this one flock. In all of these stories, all of these passages that we hear on Good Shepherd Sunday, we hear about a real flesh and blood with us God, a God who does not stay off at a distance as Bette Midler made so popular in her, her hit in the 90s, but a, a God who has come near to us, a God who is better understood and more clearly seen as we take a look at all of creation and find our place in it. A God who does not wish us to be walking dead or those who are agents of death, but instill, instead has called us 
to be agents of this living God who cares for all of creation. We also believe and confess not to let ourselves um, off the hook or not to say we have nothing to do with, with working toward the care of creation, but in order to bring hope, if not optimism, at least hope that God is still creating, that God is still present in all of creation and that God will bring all of creation to fruition. We hope and pray as we hear these stories of a God right near us, a God who is our good shepherd, a God who tends to the physical as well as the spiritual need of this flock, that we can be agents of such a God who brings life and reconciliation for all of the creation, not just for the human part of that creation. And this, this is actually, I think, what we are being called to do very often, I think people become almost hopeless when we hear about the severity of climate change. And it has been quite a year when natural disaster after natural disaster has caused fires and flooding and tornadoes and hurricanes. And when we begin to see our place in making those natural disasters even more deadly and acute, and we can lose hope, but God will never give up on God's creation. And what the world needs to hear from God's people, from God's church, that we're called to tend and steward this good garden. And that this trail of, of mercy and justice, this trail of goodness and mercy for all, this abundant life, which is the verse just before the gospel story for today, is something that God means for all of creation and that we are a part of that. We are called to be agents of life as we follow our Good Shepherd. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to have you be seated. There's going to be a video of sharing the peace and your peaceful place throughout the world. And now, siblings in Christ, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. As a way of sharing the peace, some of our board members from Lutheran's Restoring Creation are going to share with you what we call peaceful places. Hi, I'm Deaconess Heidi Michelson, and I'm from Arabia, Costa Rica. My peaceful place is a rainforest in the province of Limon, Costa Rica. And I love this place because all the birds and the insects remind me that I'm a part of God's magnificent creation. May God bless you with your own peaceful place. Peace be with you. I'm Pat Almondrod from St. Peter's in New York City. I find my peace not only in a particular place, but a particular time. This is New York City at sunrise, in all its woundedness, all its loveliness, and all its hope. May God bless you with your own peaceful place and time in this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Professor Barbara Rossing from the Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago. The peaceful place I share with you is a series of lakes in the high Alpine Lakes wilderness area of Washington State called the Enchantments. May God bless you with your own peaceful place. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Hi, I'm Phoebe Morad, and my home congregation is House of Prayer Lutheran Church in Hingham, Massachusetts. The peaceful place I'd like to share with you today is anywhere our cat John Doe decides to take a rest. He is a constant reminder in our life to find joy and peace in the present moment. May God bless you with your own peaceful place in this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff Schlesinger from Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish in Compton and Lee, Illinois. A peaceful place that I'd like to share with you is Chapel Falls in the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. My soul is calmed and refreshed as I sit and watch the water of these falls, and, and most any falls for that matter, tumble over the ledge and through and around boulders, branches, and islands. May God bless you with your own peaceful place in this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Pastor Sandy Olson Decker. I serve at Grace Lutheran Church in King City, California. My peaceful place that I'd like to share with you is the Monterey Bay. This is a place that gives us great serenity and joy. May God bless you with your own peaceful place on this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Henry Huntington from Joy Lutheran Church in Eagle River, Alaska. Peaceful place I'd like to share today is a spot our family calls the Big Swamp. The Big Swamp is peaceful to me because we're surrounded by the mountains, trees, and quiet that we love, only a half mile walk from our house. May God grant you a peaceful place of your own on this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. From Kansas City, Missouri. Um, peace be with you more. Hi, my name is Pastor Kristen Koshman from Martin Luther Lutheran Church outside of Kansas City, Missouri. The peaceful place that I'd like to share with you is Camp Moana, an ELCA ministry located in central Ohio. It is here where countless others and I have experienced God's call and grace in and through creation. And I am so grateful for the decades of faith formation that Moana offered the world before its closure last year. May God bless you with your own peaceful place in this beautiful place we call Earth. I now invite you to turn to those who may be in the room with you and share a sign of peace. And if you're able, 
to pause this video and take a moment to share one of your peaceful places with them. Well, the peace of the Lord be with you all. With the people sitting near you, share your peaceful place with one another. feel happy at home. Yeah. Like me, with grandma and grandpa at the lake. Oh, I know. We're in Cambodia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 For those of you who are watching from home, it'd be fun to, to see those in the comments or post it on Facebook later. What I hope you've seen so far today is that we are connected as a body of Christ with churches throughout the United States. And it's fun to know that we're, I know it's a little bit of an experiment. We wouldn't do this every Sunday, but for a Sunday, it's nice to feel connected and having the word and seeing what other people are trying to do come to us as well. So that now is the time for our offering. And during the offering, what I like to do is just say, thank you. Thank you for your part of creator in making this a peaceful place for many of us to gather and hear God's word of grace and love for us and for being able to support our community in various ways as well. The ways to give here at Creator are bring it into church, mail it in, or also through our website or the Give Plus app, or also directly through your bank account. That all gets to us and is put to good use as we are faithful in the ministry God has placed in our hands. Let us pray together our offering prayer. Loving creator, you brought us forth from the very earth itself. We share with others what you have entrusted to us. Bless these offerings and compel us to use them not only to serve our human neighbors, but also to serve our sister sky, our brother mountain, our mother earth, and all our family in creation. We pray this in the name of the word that dwells among us. Amen. I'm going to have you be, um, please rise for our prayers of the people. O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, your great love has placed us in your creation and you have commanded us to care for it. Your works declare glory and strength, and you call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded and destroyed earth bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us. Where we have become estranged from the creatures with whom we share this planet, grant us your peace. Creator God, hear our prayer. As we join together in celebration of the earth, we know that there are many things that thwart our efforts and our responsibilities to your creation. The issues of the environment and conservation are often associated with differing political views. For the openness to learn about environmental issues and concerns, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. In such a great and complex world, we often feel so small and helpless as if what we do has no impact on the rest of your creation. Yet we know that because we are created in your image, we are connected with the entirety of creation, just as you are. For an awareness of how our own lifestyles can be modified to help protect the creation, we pray. Creator God. In an environmental catastrophe, the people who suffer first and greatest are often the poorest of the poor. Yet we rarely hear their voices, silenced as they are by the realities of global life. For those who live in poverty and suffer the devastating effects of flooding, drought, and other environmental issues, we pray. Creator God. In recent days, even the ground under our feet has begun to tremble, reminding us that we live together in a fragile community of life. For our own community, for our city, for our state, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. As members of this creation, 
We live and die according to the cycle of life that is common in all the world. For those in our midst who suffer from sickness and death, we pray. We lift up especially this day, Nancy and Nancy, Jay, Fred and Tatiana, Aldena and Pat, Susan and Carol, Diane and Ken, Don and Betty, Janice and James, Merritt and Mary, Jack and Sandy, Vicki and Jean, Kim and the family of Mary as they mourn. Creator God, hear our prayer. God of the sun and the moon, of the mountains, deserts, and plains, God of the mighty oceans, of rivers, lakes, and streams, God of all creatures that live in the seas and fly in the air, God of every living thing that grows and moves on this sacred earth, we are formed by Christ into your people, called to bring the world into your marvelous light. As the body of Christ, we are messengers of ecological vocation. We are entrusted with caring for this earth which you have created. Help us to love and respect it, to repair what we have damaged, to care for what you have made good and holy. Give us the wisdom and the passion to change our minds, our hearts, and our ways. Let us be the change we pray for, bringing about ecological conversion, which grows and spreads to every corner of the earth. And for the sake of the people, us now and for generations to come, we entrust and we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'll have you say, um, let's see. Please say, remain standing for our song. I have to decide these things these days. It's <laughs> Before you go on your way rejoicing, Christ has the gift of the forgiveness and his body and blood for you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to, to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and with the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given and shed for you. You may commune. The God of all creation, of flowers and trees, of butterflies and bees, of squirrels and mountain lions, bless you, keep you, and strengthen you for the work of loving all creation. In the name of the triune God, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, care for creation. Amen. 